that the other had made for uh, to sit around the table. That's why I was going back on the table. But uh, we didn't eat, so that's why I'm joining this now. And then we, uh, I want to, I want to be able to have testimony service at least by 11. So we uh, do this. This is, as I said, a little different, but the Lord gave me something, a thought for us. And the theme for tonight is crown him Lord of all. Crown him Lord of all. So keep that in your mind. Uh, crown him. In other words, let's make it all about him this year. All about God and his work. You know, we have a tendency to try to tell the Lord, what about me? What about me? What about me? What about me? Well, when are you going to let me do this? When am I going to do that? When am I going to be that? What about me? But it's not about me. Everybody say it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about him. Not about me. It's about him. I think that's what you were saying in your testimony. Mm -hmm. We're trying to help somebody else. We are so concerned about ourselves until we sometimes are blindsided about other folks. I remember uh, I tell this story so often when my first husband passed away, I was going around the house for I guess, well, weeks. I was about four Kenny. <laughs> four Kenny. He's gone. Four Kenny. Four Kenny. Four Kenny. And finally the Lord said to me, what's wrong with you? <laughs> it's you. <laughs> and so I was able to get out of that funk, you know, when I realized that I didn't have nothing to worry about. I mean, it wasn't about, you know, in other words, I was the one being all sad about him, but he was with the Lord. So, you know, it was me that was, in other words, sometimes we're selfish. And so we, we think only of our own uh, pleasure, of our own blessings of our own abilities, our, our own pride. We want people to see us, what we can do, and we want to be known, and we get upset if our name's not called. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in, you know, in, in certain venues, you know, they don't call your name. Well, you know, what about me? How, you know, they didn't call me. I'm great. <laughs> call me. Say you're glad to have me here. Or whatever. It's, it's about me. I mean, that's the way we are. We're selfish. We're born that way. I mean, you can't help it. That's the way you were raised. But we have to, when, when Jesus comes in, mm -hmm. then we have to be made over again. Right? And we have to think about others more than ourselves. In other words, if they never call your name in a certain venue, so what? Jesus called you. And he knows your name. Amen. He, you know, the, the scripture said he knows the very hair on your head. So he knows pretty much about you. He knows how much hair you got and how much you bought and <laughs> how much you added and how much you subtracted. <laughs> <laughs> and how much you lost? <coughs> how much you lost? Yeah, he knows all about that. So it's not about us this year. That's what we're trying to say. Let's make it all about God and His work this year. So we're going to crown Him Lord of all. Now. Uh, Let me sit down. 
Okay. Uh, she read the scripture in Isaiah, right? Yeah. Okay. The the in the uh, the church is the church we say of the living God, right? Yeah. And so who is the head of the church? There you go. Christ is the head of the church. So then, how does it work? Christ is the head of the church, and here I'm sitting here talking to you. How does that work? He speaks through you. He speaks through me? Are you sure? Amen. <laughs> And she said, I should be listening to him. to him. Oh, I can't listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're getting it with me. You get it with me. You're good. You're good. You're smart. We have to surrender our personal vision for the larger vision of the church. All of us know how to run it. It's kind of like everybody knows all of you young people. There's not many young ones in here now, but you know, you're young as far as I'm concerned, but I'm talking about young, young, real young. In other words, when you get around 21, 25 years old, you really know how to raise kids. <laughs> Until you get some. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Is that right? Amen. Oh, you can tell people exactly. Get that friend. I'll, I'll take care of him. <laughs> you know, and I saw one time I said to myself, I saw some kids uh, talking to them. I said, no kids don't talk back to me like that. Of course, they did. I did something about it, but it didn't make it. The point is, it helped. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you think you know exactly how it's going to work, but it's not going to work that way. And so there are individuals who really know how to run the church, but they haven't been called. They know exactly what you should have done in certain cases. But um, <laughs> their vision is not the church's vision. Sometimes their vision might be just to get people in the pews. Thank you so much. But the the vision is to get what? Get people to Christ. It's not just to get people in the pew. It's to get people to Christ. Oh, yes. Oh, by the way, too, since he's asking people to say, Jen is sick now. Jen is with us. Last week, Jen that's was sick. She's now Jen. What's her name? Jen. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just keep her in your prayers. She'll be all right. All right. Um, so we've got to surrender our personal vision to the larger vision. Now, what the elders are going to do when y'all take the seats up here is you're going to you're going to tell people what the vision of the church is. You're going to talk about it as it relates to your um, what you do. You know what I'm saying in the church. You see, if everybody were in the church, just think about it. If everybody in the church was just like you. What kind of church would it be? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. If everybody paid tithes, came to uh, prayer meetings, Bible study, <laughs> Sunday morning service, heard the pastor preach, 
and, and stay for the youth pastor. If, if they did all of that, if everybody did all of that, what, you, what kind of church would we have? But because everybody has their vision of what they want to do, now it, it doesn't mean that everybody has to do everything. Everybody can do in can be in everything. Are you be you know like a, <laughs> you know you can can be in everything, but you can be in most things that connect with the vision of the church. Amen. Amen. Right. Okay. So, some, I heard the, what's his name? Brian Houston. I don't know if he's Brian Houston. But the preacher has a free church in Australia. Anyhow, he said that, uh, he said, people leave the church, they go in and out. They come in and they go out. And he said, somebody said, if they don't turn the music down, they're going to leave. He said, well, he was going to turn it up. Then. <laughs> In other words, he said he wasn't going to allow any, anybody to blackmail his vision. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? In other words, somebody said, well, if you don't start serving lunch at hmm. 10.30, hmm. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? People will say stuff like that. If you don't do this, then I'm going to. He said, let them go because they don't have the vision that you have. Yeah. Don't worry about it. We get all excited. Oh, so it's going to leave if we, don't, if we don't have some air conditioning. So he said, some people are in the church, 500 people strong and no air conditioning. So they won't leave because there's no air conditioning body. You know, don't let nobody blackmail you about your church. Yeah. Your church is your church. This church is not my church. And as a matter of fact, if it wasn't about a year with me, I wouldn't have a church. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> I couldn't be a pastor. I always say that if nobody's following you, then you're not a leader. That's right. But when somebody's following you, then you're a leader. Mm -hmm. But in your capacity, in whatever part of the church vision that you support, you can't let anybody blackmail you. If you don't sing my song, I ain't gonna be in the choir. Well, bye. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, or if you don't let me lead a song, I'm not gonna be in the choir. Bye. I mean, people do that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so this is this is lesson the Lord wants us. Let me just do something different tonight. Said, just teach a little bit and let the leaders come up and take some questions and give some input on what we're talking about. We're talking about vision. Mm -hmm. You got it? Mm -hmm. Let's make this all about God for 2016 and not about us. Amen. If people hurt your feelings because of what you do, get, then we got a cook here. And praise God, I look at the right now. now. But he's one of the main cooks. We have a cook for the, for the second service. But anyhow, the point is, if they don't like your food, then don't let me. <laughs> it, I mean, right? Amen. You can't fix something that everybody's going to like. Amen. You can't please everybody. You can't please me. And some Sundays, what they have, I may not eat. But I know how to get me a piece of toast and tea. <laughs> yeah, uh, I used to eat that for breakfast all the time. And the doctor said, you eat what? I said, toast and tea. He said, that's not enough. I mean, there was, I guess there was no protein or whatever. But I used to put in my breakfast toast and tea. And I started eating more and see how fat I'm getting. <laughs> no. <laughs> I do, because it's not like it's <laughs> <laughs> but the soup. But anyhow, so much for that. <laughs> I'm glad to see you. All right. Um, people are going to leave if we don't do what they want to do. But if they leave, 
it's because they didn't belong here in the first place. Otherwise, if they leave, they'll come back. Amen. Amen. So much for that. Amen. That's true. The parchment visions cannot compete with the church vision. Whatever your whatever your uh, department is, you can't compete with the whole church vision. I asked one of our people about something they were doing, and they said, if everybody did that, how would that work? They said, well, I guess it wouldn't. <laughs> but it kind of opened their eyes. Mm -hmm. I said, if everybody department did that, how would that work? I just asked the question. I said, well, what does it mean? And then they tried to tell me about why. Why? Well, forget that. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, well, they did what they did. Anyhow, but the part of vision, we've got to make this about God and his church. Not about me, but about God and his church. Okay. Um, so how do you know when people are losing the vision? How do you know when people are losing the vision, the church vision? Well, let me ask you. Go ahead, answer. Um, one, one of the ways you know is when our vision becomes more important than the churches yeah. or the, the leaderships. That's good. That's good. That's good. And how does that compute? How can a person know that their vision is being more important than the whole church vision. How, how would you know that? Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they don't know. But I think they will complain. Very good. What good. did you say? He said they will start complaining. Mm -hmm. Complaining? Mm -hmm. What else? It won't, it, it won't um, last. What won't last? What, what, they're, what they're trying to do. Oh. Okay. In comparison to the church's vision, it, okay. it won't, because the church will always stand. But yeah. here's one of the things: <laughs> joy will go out of what they're doing. Joy will go out of it, and when joy goes out of what you're doing, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, then there's something wrong there. If you're not enjoying what you're doing, joy will go out. And generosity will disappear. In other words, you'll quit supporting the total vision and you'll only support your vision. Mm -hmm. In other words, suppose Elder Eubank put all her money in the women's department, the money that she puts in the church. Suppose she put all that in the women's department. Then that, she would not be supporting her church vision because the lights have to be paid. Right? The heat has to go on. Oh, by the way, anybody know how to keep the heat on? I got it. <laughs> because I forgot. Janet told me, she said, it's going to go off at 9 o'clock. So you turn it back to 70. It's, it's still on. It's still on 70. Yeah. She said, you probably know what to do. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, make sure it doesn't go off. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Because <laughs> Gotta be here in a couple of hours. <laughs> and we hope it to go off. All right. It just it just came to me. All right. Generosity disappears when egos reign. In other words, I don't want to support what you're doing. I'm only gonna support what I'm doing. If you're gonna only support what you're doing, then that means you got an ego that needs to be cut down. And so it means there's some poison somewhere there in that root. And if there's poison in the root, then when the tree grows up, it's going to be poison. Why is there prejudice in our hearts? Prejudice, I, I'm talking about like black and white now. It's because it's in our root. We're still mad at, at slavery, and not one of us has been enslaved. You are a parent. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I mean, which one of us has been enslaved? <laughs> but 
but we're still mad. But you see, the things that happen cause some of the things that are happening now to be rooted in us, and we're still mad at the people that perpetrated it. And so some of them, on the other side, they're still um, they're still acting as if you are still a slave. And so you get mad at them when how are you supposed to act as a Christian toward people that do you wrong? Love them. We're supposed to love them. Mm -hmm. And love Martin Luther King, the only reason he got where he was is because the, the uh, marches that he had were full of love. He didn't retaliate when people were doing him wrong. I mean, talk about wrong, really wrong, bad. Yeah. He didn't retaliate, but he gave love. So we are supposed to be Christians, and we're still mad. <laughs> At the other race. But we're supposed to be loving them into get, and they'll start, they'll change. The only thing that's going to change anybody is the love of God. Amen. Love's going to do it. Did you have something? No. Okay. Um, I can see more people and stuff today. I'm saying. Um, poison, I say, in the root will bear a bitter tree. Poison in the root will bear a bitter tree. So if it's if it's rooted in us, you know, they did this this way, and they still doing this. Well, if they still doing this, are you still loving? Are you still mad at them? And see, you could let me tell you something. I'll tell you something I want to say. A guy one time, this I'll never forget this. I was in a bank and I was doing something in the bank. Nothing wrong, but the guy, what I did wasn't, I didn't do it properly, the business that I was taking care of. And he's a big, big tall, white guy. And he had, um, there was something on him. He had, there was something about his hair or whatever it was. But anytime I see a guy with that kind of hair, something would rise up in me. Because this guy was rude to me when I was trying to take care of business. You understand what I'm saying? I had to get that out of me. Because, you know, just because they had, he had red hair, <laughs> mm. everybody with red hair <laughs> didn't have in their heart what that guy did to me. You understand what I'm saying? My, my husband used to say, my cousin, Louis, cousin, he said, because he had so much trouble in his last marriage. The man that took his wife had a blue car, and he, he could not stand a blue car. <laughs> when he came back with me, he could not stand a blue car. I mean, he didn't get over that until he married me. He said he saw the blue car coming, he just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because the, the guy that saw his wife, or one of the guys that saw his had a blue car. <laughs> now, you know what I'm saying? That's the, I mean, we laughing at that, but that's the way we are. We, we still mad at Caucasian folks because their granddaddy did us wrong. And so there are people doing us wrong now because of what their granddaddy did. And if they if they white, then we don't want nothing to do with it. I can I can talk like that because we don't have any of our Caucasians with us today. <laughs> but I could say it anyhow if they were here. But I want you to know that we got to get some love. Amen. Because Amen. It's, see, we, we're back on the theme. It's not about us. It's about him. Amen. It's about God. And it, regardless to what they have done or are doing now, because. Is there any day that you get go out in Portland and you're not black? <laughs> Is there any day that you go out to the shopping mall and you're not black? Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm black every day. 
<laughs> Every day that I get up, I'm still this color. I, it, it just won't change. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think it's okay. <laughs> you don't have a choice. <laughs> <coughs> so what I'm saying is, every day they get up, they still white. They can't change the black people. Amen. And because they're white, they don't mean that their granddad, their grandmama, or their granddad did you wrong. You don't know what their, their granddad might have done. You right there. That's probably, <laughs> huh? Yeah, 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 that, that's the way it is. It was your ancestors, so so you're responsible. Right. I'm not responsible for what my ancestors did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even if I have prejudice in me, I'm not responsible for what, I mean, they're not responsible, so there's no reason for me to be mad at them because I don't know what's in their heart. I think that's why God let me marry who I did the first time so he could show me that some people had real love. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Real, sure enough, love. Yeah. Regardless. All right. We're talking about, let's make it all about God and His Word. 2016. Don't exalt yourself. Lead with your eyes open. So, what are we talking about? In other words, when you see people getting off, don't be afraid to confront them. Get for me Second Samuel. Uh, ooh, I didn't put the, the uh, chapter down. Second Samuel. What I wanted to talk about was uh, Absalom stole the hearts of the people. Remember. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's in Second Samuel, I know, but I'm not sure where. I think what what verse is that? All right. Read. We just read some of it. After this had happened, that Absalom divided himself and chariots and horses, and fifty men to run before him on the first of the morning. That's good. Now Absalom would rise early and stand beside the way to the gate. So it was, whenever anyone who had a lawsuit came to the king for a decision, that Absalom would call to him and say, What city are you from? And he would say, Your servant is from such and such, the tribe of Israel. Then Absalom would say to him, Look, your case is good and right, but there is no deputy of the king to hear you. Now see, here's what Absalom was doing. Absalom knew that David was the king. Mm -hmm. so, well, there's nobody, you know, well, in other words, just turn it back to us here. Mm -hmm. Say, well, you know, Pastor Grace, she's, she's up in age now. She probably don't feel like talking to you. <laughs> the devil is a lie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. She probably she 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 can't get over the prank. I was telling my son, uh, drove me tonight, and he he back he he left after he played for the Destiny game, and uh, he uh, well got it, but well, but anyway, the. The uh, I couldn't I can drive myself, mm -hmm. but I appreciate Amen. help. Amen. So when we have a church, we have helpers who are elders, and it doesn't mean that they are elders because the pastor has faded out. <laughs> they are elders because God placed them here to uphold the word. Amen. But they're not standing in the gate saying, "Don't go to her." Go to me, because I can give you the best advice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know. I, I, we don't have, that, that's not going on. That, don't even think about that with these elders that I was talking about here. 
But my point is, that's what they do, people do, to try to get people on their territory mm -hmm. so that they can be, uh, well, they, they get their egos up, make them feel good. Well, you know, they couldn't talk to a pastor, so they had to talk to me. But I tell people, you know, this woman right here is one of the main uh, people that I tell folks in our church. Go to her if you're having marital problems. <laughs> she can help you out. Mm. She's a good counselor. Amen. You know, they, there's some people just good for counseling. Amen. They, they're, they're just, God good. gave her that gift. Amen. And so I tell them, so you say, well, I don't want to go to her because she's too close to the pastor. I'll go to, uh, mm, let's see, uh, I'll try to go to, uh, I'll go to the brother over here. Because he don't know me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People do that kind of stuff. But uh, David didn't confront the son. He didn't confront Absalom. Mm -hmm. So Absalom got himself hung up. And the Lord had to take care of him. Mm -hmm. And he got hung up by a tree and lost his life after trying to take David's place. Right? Right, yeah. right? So what you have to do is in your venue, you have to confront, I would say, your sons and your daughters. In other words, people that are in your uh, department, you have to confront people that are, are striving to get their egos inflated. You understand what I'm saying? Those who are under you. Because people have selfish ambitions sometimes. You give them a position, and the Lord gives sometimes these positions to people, but they get the big head. And it's not that the Lord didn't want them to do it, but they just didn't follow through like God wanted them to. And so they have selfish. All right, there's two, two more scriptures, and then we're going to have Ellie. First Kings 1 and 6. And then Numbers 11 and 25. First Kings 1 and 6. Now his father, King David, had never disciplined him at any time. Now that's it. David had never disciplined his son. And if people get on the wrong track, you gotta be bold enough in your department to tell them you're on the wrong track. You can't dishonor my head and be blessed because God's not gonna, he's not gonna bless you. That way you can't, you can't do that. In other words, when I say my head, I'm talking about if, if Elder Eubanks or Elder Sam or Elder Perkins whatever they're doing. They can't let people dishonor their pastor Amen. and say in their good graces. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. So, uh, so the selfish ambition, we're losing our position. <laughs> now Danny's gone and then she's gone. So maybe she'll be back. I know Danny will be back, but he went to play for the other church for a while. He played for us at the beginning. Yes. All right. Numbers 11 to the back. And the Lord came down in the cloud mm -hmm. and spake unto him. Spake unto him who? It was Moses. Moses. All right. And took of the spirit that was upon him. Okay. And gave him unto 70 elders. That's what I wanted. And that's that's sufficient. The Lord took of the Spirit. So we're going to ask the elders a question. Can do you have a spirit that God can take and put on those who you teach? Mm -hmm. Is your spirit such that God can use? In other words, the God took the spirit of Moses mm -hmm. and put it on seventy elders. Mm -hmm. Well, can He take your spirit and put it on the elders? 
on people that are under you? Amen. Can he do that? Yes, Lord. If he if he can do that, then you're on the right track. Amen. See what I'm saying? Amen. That means there's no poison in your blood. Amen. But when your tree comes up, it's going to come up with a good tree with good fruit. Jesus. Up. Yes. Am I making this sense? Amen. 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 All right. Uh, so the theme. Let's make it all about God and his church. Crown him Lord of all. You know, um, the song, there's a song like that. It says, bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of the Lord. He's the chosen seed of Israel to raise the ransom from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. In other words, God is over all of us. Amen. And none of us are big eyes. And so that means there's no little use either. Mm. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. God is Lord of all. So we all have to look to him. Hallelujah. And so I'm looking to him. Who are you looking to? Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let every kindred, I have this thing, every tribe on the celestial ball. To him, all majesty, ascribe and crown him Lord of all. Thank you, Jesus. Ascribe to him. He's king of kings and Lord of lords. Now, do you all understand what I want you to do there, elders? All right. You got it. You got it. I took about 30 minutes, so you got 40. It's 11 o'clock. And so we're going to have our testimony meeting. All right. I'm vacating the chair. And, uh, you three. One, two, three. Four. Four. Okay. All right. I'll be the sacrificial lamb. <laughs> All right. Father, we ask your blessing on the wisdom that you have espoused tonight. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Let's make it all about God. We have nothing save but that which He's given us. We have nothing, good or bad. He's given us all. All things are for us. We choose to make choices and decisions how to use them. One of them is supporting the pastor. One of the best ways to create dissension in the church is ego and lack of love. Because what happens is that you start putting yourself into an elevated position and you raise yourself above God in that position, way above the pastor. Now, we are influenced by the spirit that God gives us. Pastor Gray, all successful churches work that way. But the ones that don't show love, the ones that don't show warmness, the ones that act from Sunday to Sunday that they really can't stand the person on the other side of the room is breaking down the morale of the church. And that morale of the church comes from love. If you want the church to flourish spiritually and or financially, we have to be on one accord. There's no way that you can lead and turn around if nobody's following you. But you have to follow the leader, which is the direction that God has given her which we are supposed to follow. That's why we're here. We were chosen. We were chosen to be here tonight. I can't speak for those that aren't here tonight, but the ones that are. Hi, Jerry. The ones that are. They came in right on time. The ones that are here tonight are the ones that will receive what the pastor has got as the vision for the new year. Without that vision and understanding, all we're doing is going to a building on Sunday and hanging out. 
symbolically praising the Lord, not to say that we don't praise the Lord in spirit and truth, but a lot of it has just become such routine or such a program of what we've done from our youth to get up and to do this. And if we don't do this, we get the bad look from someone else or the bad look from someone else. Or the first thing someone's going to do is say, where were you? I haven't seen you in weeks. And that makes you depressed. And that makes you not want to deal with it next week. But if you miss me this time, I'm talking. Maybe don't miss me next week too. I think I'll not hang out. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place and it calls you to come. It is your choice not to be here. But the Spirit is calling you. That's why you're here tonight. The vision of the church is to be of one accord. Sure, we want to be financially stable. A new roof, the carpet repaired that it needs to be, the air conditioning, the heater working, and all of these things that happen behind the scenes in the different meetings that happen around the church or the different budget assignments that are given to the budget department. We don't know what's going on. And we have to trust in that leadership because if we don't, we'll scatter. Trust him in his, trust him in his vision for the church. It's to grow, but it's a hospital. Keep in mind, there's nobody here that has moved past the first stages of sickness. We are all hungering for that penicillin that is given by the Holy Spirit to move on and up to higher heights and deeper depths in him. Some of it is only breaking over that, that barrier. You can do that by following the pastor because she'll keep you on track. The Bible studies, the messages, all of these are in continuity one to the other. And they lead us to the point to where we are today. But when we fight, when we backbite, when we talk ill about the pastor, about the other elders, and we don't talk about me, you know, because you don't know where my spirit is. I may come get you. <laughs> but I know you, I, I've heard it. I've heard it. And it's not bad, you know. I mean, what is life without a certain amount of mumbling, isn't it, you know? Adam and Eve was created, and the first thing they did was start mumbling. Next thing you know, they ended up naked. You know, and then they found out. And this is the same thing that happens here. When you go against the authority, you'll end up naked, and all of your body is exposed to the elements. You can't not understand how a church works. There has to be a head. God is the head. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Then the pastor. Then the trickle effect. Generally, I go by the seniority of the eldership or the position of the eldership. It's more experience. You can have elders like me that have been around for a while but don't know as much because of background experience as some others. My background, Pastor Grace talked about uh, separations in the church because of race. I was dealing with a, a church this last summer and they were very good people, but they were all white. Jerry went, surprised me that he showed up. But those people love my wife. I, I assume they love me. They call me pastor, and it still makes me cringe. I, pastor, it's like, when did this happen? It's an honor to have people come up and call you pastor and recognize that spirit on you. But you won't have it if you fight when you get back to the church. I'm not going to be able to do the ministry. My ministry is going to be what the pastor asked me to do. I wanted to do a horse ranch ministry. It's infeasible. The Lord gave me that vision to bring me to this point. But if the Lord wants me to go farther, he'll tell me. Otherwise, I'm supposed to stay right here and support the pastor and you. And be the best little guy I can be, you know. I used to be evil, mean, bad, and nasty. It doesn't take much to do that. It certainly doesn't wear out your ability to love and hate. You know, you look at somebody because they're white, you prejudge them because of what somebody else did. You don't know. That person could be your best friend. He could have the money that you're looking from. 
or he can have the relief that you need. There's so many talents out there amongst races. And simply because of this superficial assignment, we put value on people. There's no value in that. Technically, pastor was incorrect in one thing. Most of the time, I'm Chinese. My friends call me some young guy. <laughs> but the reason I do that is because I don't, I'm black. I mean, I'm just as honest as anybody else. I went to the dentist this morning. I was black there. I went to the mall the other day. I was black there, too. Regardless of how I feel about things, even when I go home, I'm still black. Be what you are, but be the best one you can. The best one you can is to show up. Don't carry on all these silly burdens about what you figure somebody's about. I don't know Patrick's heart. I think I know his mind by conversation. But when he leaves here tonight, I don't really know where he's going. Nor do you know where I'm going. I've had friends out there in the world. I know how to get a hold of them if that was my eager desire. But I don't want to do that. And neither does Patrick. And neither do you. That's why you're here. You chose all those options to watch to come in, the, the clock come in at 12 o'clock, and start a new year of what you did last year. This is what we should do next year to make up for last year. Because we didn't. I didn't study as much as I should have. I read every day. But I didn't study, study, study every day. So how am I going to be able to help you if I don't get in this word? You ask me a question, and I don't have the slightest clue where to find it. The Lord told me that too. He says, how are you going to teach if you don't know where to find it? <laughs> so it compelled me to read some more and to buy more glasses. But my vision is the same as the pastor's. I love this lady. Last night at the Bible study, I'm not going to be much longer, but last night at the Bible study, I alluded to my time in the service, my time in the military. You don't know what I, as Sam, went through in that time. Because I was not a very feisty young man. When I went into the service at 17, now, uh, Angel's son, how was he, 15, 16? 16. One more year, I was on my way to Vietnam. You know how cute that little guy is? Nice, you know, he got up there and sang. You know, and he really is breaking out of that. It's part of maturity. I was the same kind of kid he was. Little, small for my age. Picked on, teased, harassed. And I grew up with those attitudes. With both white people and black people. Black people thought everything was funny. Ha, ha, ha. And they were making jokes. Your mama must have been short because you didn't come out that tall. You know, all those silly things that kids say to each other. Those were black. Pushed me to the white side. Found out they had the same problems over there. Went back to the middle. That's why I stuck with Chinese. Because I never <laughs> heard that from my kids. But we are Chinese in this church. We are all on one accord. This is the great wall. And everything on the other side of the Mongolian horde. And if the Lord doesn't protect us and keep our walls up because of our strength and prayer in unity, they'll fall. Whatever your problem is, drop it. Drop it. If you can't fix it, you can't fix it. Give it to God and let go. You sit there breaking your back, making everybody in the pew hate your presence being around you. And there's nothing you can do about the problem you've got. You created it in the first place. Best thing I can suggest to do is just look at the whites over here. I love you guys. That's a burden I don't have on you. Patrick, I love you. And mean it, mean it, and work on it, work on it. It, it doesn't come natural. You don't get married the first day you see somebody. It takes time. It takes time. You've got to build a relationship. But we've all been in this church for quite a while. We know each other pretty well. We're a family. We know where most of each other lives. 
It shouldn't be a big problem. It shouldn't be no schism within the church. We all grew up together. Half of your cousins are related, except for the Chinese part of the family. But what I see, what I see pastor trying to get out of us is to read the word, study the word, see what the Lord has for you. That'll put you in context with the vision, not in strife or contention. See what the Lord has for you. Love each and every one that you see come through that door, even if you can't try. There's something about you that's not lovable, too. And as I close, everybody ain't chiding. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> We, I said four, but we got five with, with, with Jan. So um, I think we'll have, um, you know, because we, we're trying to get the testimony meeting by, by 11. Um, let's see, that's 30 minutes. Well, that's okay. We go 10 minutes after. Give everybody at least 10 minutes, huh? 10 minutes. What was the, what was the, okay. Um, Elder, White and then Janet, Janice, Elder Janet, and then uh, Elder Clifford and uh, Sister Ellen with her last teacher. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to, we have to kind of, you know, make No, 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 hurry, that's the time. We understand what the, the theme is. Let's make this all about God and His work. Crown Him Lord of all. And then you, I wanted you to kind of give a little time for questions, but we didn't, that's okay. And your vision, yeah. And your vision. Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Praise God. Years ago, um, Bishop Grace had said some of the things that she wanted to do for the church or with the church. And at the time that she had stated it, um, there was a lot of things that were listed. Many, many things. And one of the things was that she had wanted to open up the doors where people could come in and worship God. Not to look at one another. She wanted to do away with the legalism. And she wanted the heart to be filled with the love of God. And not for us to look around and see who had on pants. Because I would tell you that all of the ladies that wore pants tonight, including myself, would not be able to go get into heaven. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Am I right? Amen. Amen. Or red. Or red. <laughs> Absolutely. Or your toes out. I probably 
probably no one has their tongues out tonight because it's cold. <laughs> but <laughs> praise God. The vision that I had, I believe, coincides with this scripture on tonight. And the Lord didn't call me because I was a great person. He called me and I didn't want to do what he wanted me to do. <laughs> I don't want to be a oh God, a preacher. That means I had to be in contact with people. And I just prefer to be left alone. And so when the Lord began to deal with me, and he dealt with me for a number of years, and there were things that I went through that I didn't understand why they were happening. But when, I, when the Lord freed me, allowed me the freedom, I realized in my mind and in my heart that it was because I needed to be able to preach the gospel, to be able to help the captive be set free, to preach the acceptable year, hallelujah, of the Lord, to heal those that were brokenhearted. See, some of those things I experienced was because there were people that were in captivity that needed to know that God was able to free them. Mm -hmm. And today when I was ministering, praise God, to that man, I told him, I, I started to walk away and then I turned and I looked at him and I said, I know what I'm saying to you. You may not understand, but I know somebody, I told him. And I looked at him. I know the Almighty. Ha! That he knows you. And he knows your condition. And I'm praying for you that the Almighty changes the situation and your condition that you're in right now. I have outreach, deliverance, evangelizing, benevolence. It all comes under the benevolence or outreach. So I go to hospitals, nursing homes, out on the street. I feed folks that are hungry. I go and I talk to people that are angry with the church and they get angry with me. <laughs> but you know, the Lord, hallelujah, needs for us. There is somebody and he chose me to do that part of the job that he had trained me for. He had taken me through training, praise God. He has taken me through training. He has taken me through training. There are some things that God allowed me to experience during my 47 years of marriage. Lord God. And I never thought in my whole life that any of those things I went through on the Blue Banks was going to be, you know, but I, I learned some things. I saw a school, and the school has been closed down for a number of years. I think it's Cleveland. 
I'm not sure. But it's over there by the hospital. Maybe it's not uh, true. Jackson. What? Where's Jackson High? It's a high school. Cleveland's still open. Okay. And it's got a fence all around Washington, Washington, Washington High. Washington. Yeah. Washington. And I went by there by mistake because I made the wrong turn, which I do, I, I thought it was a wrong turn. And I saw the school. And I said, Lord, this school has been empty for a long, long time. A lot of people that don't have houses and have no place to live could have a room in this school. And I said, all I need is the money or you can give it to me. And I said, and the church, because I know that pastor's vision, hallelujah, is to be able to kick the shelter. Yes, we have a shelter, but that's not, that shelter, that's not the shelter. But that school, it has like three or four floors. That's the shelter. And it has cooking facility and rest rest room. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And my time is up. But that's my vision and I believe that that is the vision that goes and coincides with the church's vision. Praise God. God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for being who you are in our lives. We thank you for our leaders. We thank you, Lord God, for leading us through her, guiding us through her, building us up, Lord God, and encouraging us through her. We ask, Lord God, that you continue to uplift her and give her words of wisdom, Lord God, and continue to instruct her, Lord God, so that when she comes before your people, that we will hear what she's saying and we will do what she asks us to do. And be faithful as we use, as we, Lord God, follow her leading and guide her. We love you so much on today, Lord God. We thank you so much for even an opportunity to be able to say something in the presence of your people. We ask, Lord God, that you continue, Lord God, bless your church and, and keep us, Lord God, and keep in mind that, that this too, hallelujah, shall come to pass. Lord God, you said in your word that when we pray, that means, Lord God, that we're going to pray. So, Lord God, we're asking you to give us the words to say on tonight. We're asking you, Lord God, to help us to say them so that they may get into the hearts of your people, so that they may be forever remembered, Lord God, as something as an ah moment. Well, this is what I needed to hear. Or this I didn't understand that. Or, Lord Jesus, just bless us on tonight to be who, who, who you would have us to be every single day that we wake up, Lord God. Bless us on tonight, O oh Lord God. To know, Lord God, that we are your children, and that you do love us, and that you do hear us, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you help us, Lord Jesus, to hear your word and to have hearts to receive it on tonight. Lord God, I'm not just saying that the words that I speak, but I mean as a beginning point, Lord God. As a beginning point, Lord God. Let this night, Lord Jesus, be the night that we begin to hear the words that are spoken through our leaders. And not only hear your words, Lord God, but to begin to do what the leader says to do. We ask, Lord God, that on tonight, let the night be the night, Lord God, on 2015, December the 31st, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that, that you lead us, Lord God, the way that she's empowering us, but you lead us, Lord God, through the words that she speaks, that those empowering words, Lord God, can let us know, Lord God, that we too can heal the sick. Let us know, Lord God, that we too can set the captive free. Lord God, let us know, Lord God, that the people that you put before us, Lord God, are the ones that you want us to work with and talk to and, and to be, Lord God, that example like our leader is to us. We ask, Lord God, that you open up our hearts, Lord Jesus, to know, Lord God, that there's things that we're supposed to do, Lord God, but 
not only to know, Lord God, that there are things that we're supposed to do, but we're asking on tonight, Lord God, that you let tonight be the night that we set aside to, to do those things, Lord, that you're asking us to do. You speak to us, Lord God. You do speak to us, Lord God. So, Lord God, we're asking on tonight that you hear, you hear us, Lord Jesus, as we're talking to you. You said in your word, Lord God, that if we ask, we shall receive. And you're faithful according to your word. You said in your word, Lord God, that if we seek, that we shall find. And Lord God, you're faithful according to your word. Lord God, you said, Lord Jesus, that if we knock, Lord God, the door will be open unto us. So Lord God, there are things that are in us, Lord God, that we're asking you for, Lord Jesus. Give us, Lord God, what is needed on tonight, on this December the 31st, 2015. To know, Lord God, that from this day forward that you hear us. And that you are answering us. But what we need is the patience, Lord God. We need your patience on tonight, Lord Jesus. To know, Lord God, yes, our family will be saved. We don't see it. We don't know how you're going to do it. But because you said it, it's going to happen. Lord God, we need you to do, Lord God, Jesus. We need you to do God. We need you to do, hallelujah, those things in our lives that only you can do. But we also need patience, Lord God. And we have the patience, Lord God, but teach us how to work it. Teach us how to work the love in our lives. Teach us how to work that joy in our lives. Teach us how to work the peace that you've given us, Lord God. The peace that surpasses all understanding. Because, Lord God, there's a lot of stuff that we do not understand. Lord God, we're calling on you because you're faithful according to your word. You said in your word in Jeremiah that if we call on you, so it's a choice that we have. We call it on everything else and we call it on everybody else. But Lord God, you said in your word that if, hallelujah, we will call on you here, that you will answer us and you're faithful according to your word and that you will show us great and mighty things that we know not of. We need you, Lord God, working in our lives. It's the Jesus, the God of the Bible that we need. Not the one, Lord God, that, that we can tell what to do. We don't need that God. But we need the God of the Bible, the one that Abraham talked to, and Isaac and Jacob. We need that God. We need the God that Bishop Gracie Osborne talks to. We need that God, the one that is faithful according to his word. If we can find it in the word, Lord God, you're able to do it. You told us, Lord God, in Habakkuk, hallelujah, that, you, that you're going to do something that we're not even going to understand. And we're not even going to believe. But you said you're going to do it. And then you said that you're even going to tell us that you're going to do it. And then, Lord God, you left the word here for us to look at and read. Give us a mind and a heart and a hunger for your word. Because you said in your word, Lord God, that if we hunger and thirst after righteousness, we shall be filled. Lord God, you spoke these words, hallelujah. You said it in your word. And Lord God, you also said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Lord God, that means that we have to read your word. And leave Bashem Kasu. Not only do we have to read your word, Lord God, but we have to begin to talk the language of the word. Lord God, because you understand what you said. And if you said it in the word and we say it back to you, Lord God, we are talking your language. We are talking the way that you talk. Lord God, so and then we realize, Lord God, that if we're talking the way that you're talking, then that means that we have the mind of the pastor. We have the mind of the leader that you're set before. She is the set one of this house. And Lord God, you said that you give us pastors after your heart. So help us, Lord God, to not let your heart be upset with us and not holy up for shot. Not, Lord God, hallelujah, do things our way and, and bring it to her and, and try to force it down her throat, Lord God, so that she can see it our way. But help us, Lord God, to turn that thing around. And Lord Jesus, help us to listen to her. She said, Lord Jesus, that she wants people to pray and, and to seek your face as the Bible teaches us to. But those words came out of her mouth. So we're supposed to be doing what she, hallelujah, instructs us to do. Lord Jesus, we need you. We cannot do anything without you. Without you, Lord God, we are like ships without a sail, tossed to and fro, not knowing which way to go. Lord God, we just need the Jesus of the Bible. The one, Lord God, that Pastor Grace 
teaches us about. The one, Lord God, that Pastor Grace lived by. The one, Lord God, that Pastor Grace is the example of. Lord God, we need you. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that you help us to receive the words that come out of the mouth of Pastor Grace. We ask, Lord God, to not only receive it, but Lord Jesus would be doing the words so that we again can be manifesting the word in flesh. Lord God, we want to be like you. We really, really, really want to be like you. But Lord God, there are days that we're nothing like you at all. We don't even resemble you at all. There's things, Lord God, that we say that doesn't even sound like you. We, Lord God, do, but doesn't even look like you. We're supposed to be saying those things that our Father said. We're supposed to be doing those things that our Father did because you've given us the power to be able to do. We ask, Lord God, that you allow the Holy Ghost to work through us. Lord God, we ask that you allow the Holy Ghost to see through our eyes. We ask, Lord God, that you allow the, that we allow the Holy Ghost to hear through our ears. We ask, Lord God, these things because you said in your word that if we ask, we shall receive it. And Lord Jesus, look at this, Lord. You even said, Lord God, if we seek, we shall find. Lord God, you said that we knock, the door shall be opened. So Lord God, so many of us are, are knocking on the door of healing. We don't know, Lord Jesus, how it's done and how you do it and all the other kind of things that go with it. But Lord God, we know that if we ask you and wait on you and do what you tell us to do, you are faithful to do what you said that you would do. So we ask, Lord God, that you help us to be doers of your word and not just hearers only. Lord God, but what happens is when we're here and we're amidst our brothers and our sisters and, and we're in the midst of the word, everything seems like it can be done just like it said. We even have the hearts, Lord God, to know and, and to be excited about going out and doing it. But Lord God, when I was reading the Bible the other day, I seen, Lord God, that how even though we were doing, Lord God, those things that, that, that was pleasing in your sight, and I see, Lord God, that somehow some of us even fail, even in the Bible, Lord God. So we thank you because our pastor said, that we are supposed to be prayer warriors. That's her vision, that we pray. And that not, not only that we pray, but we do the things that the Bible says to do. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you. We're going to come in from here when we started. We're asking our elders to give her their vision, how it works with the church vision. And uh, the theme was, I forgot my theme, but crown, the theme. Him, crown him Lord of all. So we got two more, three more elders because Pete Danny came in. So uh, Elder Danny, you uh, be prepared to speak. You don't have to go back no more. No. You, you're with us now. <laughs> oh Lord, he's playing for everybody tonight. All right. So Ellen, after Ellen Kirk is Ellen Danny, and then Ellen Eubanks. All right? And we're using 10 minutes. That's why I'm telling everybody that now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're glad to be here. I'm here under the directions of the Lord. All right. The Lord. Say it, come here. So I understand why I'm here now. Okay. Uh, because I found out, I don't know, any, maybe it could be for anyone else in Portland who's right there. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the, um, the, the truth. Amen. Tell it like it is. Amen. Everybody don't get this kind of teaching. Amen. 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 Y'all think about going some ways brought it out. <laughs> this is the place. Amen. See, I was trying to go someplace else. And uh matter of fact, I was trying to go to New Guinea. But then after twice, <laughs> between that and the next Sunday, the Lord 
came into my room, scared me half to death. And when he got finished talking to me, I understood what he wanted to say. He said, you go to Grace Tucker. All you do is show yourself to the priest. That's all he said. And when I came that next Sunday, when she looked back and saw me, she did that. Because I did what God told me to do. I want you to know there's only one God. Amen. Only one. And we are here to do his vision, what this woman sees. Mm -hmm. The Lord showed me a vision once of a tree. And all of you just think you're out of place. You're not where you're supposed to be. <clears throat> Listen to this vision the Lord showed me. He showed me a tree, huge tree. Had a lot of leaves on it. He said, you see that leaf on the top of the tree? I said, yes, Lord. He said, is that part of the tree? I said, yes. You see the leaves in the middle? He said, is that part of the tree? I said, yes, Lord. You see the leaves on the very bottom, the last leaf on that tree? Do you see it? I said, I see it, Lord. They all part of that tree, aren't they? So it makes no difference what position you got in you. There's only one vision, and that's to please God and to do what He say do. And I said, Lord, I thank you. Thank you. So whether I sweep the floor, it doesn't matter. Whether I'm a doorkeeper, it doesn't matter. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. As long as I'm doing the vision of God. That's all that's required of me to do. And follow what she said do. So when I had a man's meeting, I don't teach my own schism. <laughs> and the Lord called me for a reason. Yes. I'm a kind of gentle fellow. I don't like to get upset. You very seldom see me upset. Not that I can't get upset. But I keep it under because I want to be a light for somebody else to see Christ in me. Yes, Amen. yes. And when you in yourself, how is he going to see God in you? You got to get out of self. Right. Lord have mercy. Get out of self yes. and get in your mind. I'm here for one reason, and that's to do what God said do. Thank you, Jesus. But you listen to the leader. Yes. This is the leader. Amen. Sitting right here. I pray for all the time. Lord, give us strength. Let us live 120 years. <laughs> You don't get this teaching everywhere. Amen. 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 You don't get it. And a lot of times, because she don't say things, we think we're getting away with stuff. Mm -hmm. But she don't say nothing until God tells her to say it. Amen. Because she don't want to be doing something on her own. She sees the vision of God, and that's whose vision she's trying to follow. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. God is the root. He called each and every one of us out of darkness into this marvelous light Amen. to do his work, not ours, but to do his Amen. work that he has for each one. My God, when you open the door and let people out and in, do it for God. Amen. If you let them out, tell them to come back again. If you let them in, tell them don't leave until the service is over. Bless your name, Jesus. We're trying to do the vision of God. Amen, amen. And this woman got the vision. Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. All of you that agree with me, say hallelujah. 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 All right. Hallelujah. We're not here to do our own thing. If you're here to do your own thing, then you're in the wrong spot. Amen. 
but we are here to do what God should do. And listen, she spoke on last night about getting close to God. Right, right. Lord already done talked to me about it. I said, Lord, I thank you. And I wanted to get to you, but you didn't talk about it. I said, Lord, that's exactly what you want us to do. Amen. Amen. Get closer to him so we know what's going on. Amen. <laughs> when we're out there alone and doing our own thing, you're going to be so confused and messed up. And when she says something, how come she talking like that? That's because you got too far away. You're right. Mm. Yeah. Get closer. Look, God, my love and shit. He said, draw closer to me. That's what he said. Hallelujah. How you going to do his job and when you way out there by yourself getting your own ideas together? Mm -hmm. Well, I know Russia, but God told me to go over here and start this. Did he? <laughs> Has the pastor said anything about it? Well, did you tell the pastor? She's the leader. <laughs> and I believe in my heart if God tell you, he going to tell the leader first. Amen. 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 You hear me? Amen. He talks to this woman. Amen. When y'all <laughs> you talking to her. Amen. Lord have mercy. We are in the right place. Thank you, Jesus. You're not out of place, Brother Jerry. You're right here. But don't go try to go someplace else. No, you try to go someplace else, brother. Right here. All right. <laughs> Stay here. Amen. God got great things for you. Amen. Not only you, for everybody to see. Amen. 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 I don't care if it makes no difference what position you got. Good. Bless him, Jesus. If you got standing at the door, letting people Amen. in now. Long as you in the house of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. you hear me? Thank you, Jesus. And you're on your way to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. What in a different do way? If I'm sweeping the floor, picking up the trash, if I'm going to heaven, that's all right. With I me. know that's right. Yeah. Hey. That's all right with me. What's up, yes. Crazy. <laughs> I pick up paper. If I take trash out, as long as I'm on my way to glory, that's all that matters. As long as I'm following the vision that my leader is following. Amen. Then things don't matter. So I try to get that through the men's head. They stop coming almost one while. You know who I talk to? I talk to God. Amen. Amen. And when I talk to God, God talks to some of them. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I right? Amen. I didn't say nothing. When the men don't show up, I don't say How come y'all didn't come to me and people? I don't say one word. I know that's right. I talk to God. <laughs> that's that's who I talk do. to. Amen. Amen. And when you talk to God, things gonna get done. Amen. Amen. This woman talks to God. Yes, yes. That means things gonna get done. Yes. So Amen. get in line behind her. Thank you, Jesus. Lift her up. Thank you, Jesus. You understand? Yes. Lift her up. She's on the right path. Amen. Trust me. Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is, uh, what did you say, our vision work in the, in the church and vision? Yes. Yes, the Lord. Uh, I like to say it like this: uh, Give us this day our daily bread. Uh, that's my prayer. That we all eat of the same body Amen. and drink of the same cup. Um, I've done my thing, and I've I've been harnessing myself to know how to fit in to Mother's vision. Mm -hmm. And while I'm fitting in, I've been uh, practicing. Peace. Mm -hmm. 
usually if you're not doing what I say, I'm like you, you're fired. Mm -hmm. You, you got to go. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm learning uh, patience. Um, and the Lord has given me that, but I'm still practicing patience. Amen. Um, this year, he's given it to me what to do, and that will be done. Um, you see the vocals, how they're trying to move, and they'll move, and then they'll cool off, and then they'll move again, and they'll cool off. What you say, uh, we stand at the plate to hit the pitch, and sometimes we miss it. But it's not far off where we're going to have uh, some real ball players. <laughs> we're going to have some real saints that uh, are coming to serve the Lord and not like Brother Elder Perkins said, not their own agenda. Amen. Not our own agenda. And that's what we're trying to get to the people that we work with. It's not our agenda. It is the Lord's agenda. So stop fighting amongst ourselves and get on board with the Lord's vision. Yeah. Uh, it, I had a thing happen to me back uh, in prison when uh, the brother would come to church. He had a special row that he had folks sitting where he would sit. And mm -hmm. If he stood up, they would stand up. Uh, if he would do certain things, they would do certain things. I had spoken to this brother prior. Uh, they called him the Silver Fox. Um, he was a minister, an elder, and he had toured the world. And uh, when he would get up to testify or to say anything concerning the Lord, he would always bring my name up. You know, so I spoke to him and said, you don't have to call my name every time you get up, you know. Because for me, I knew what that meant. Uh, you're trying to be on my side, you know. <laughs> and that's what sometimes folks do to be on your side, to warm up to you. But I was explaining to him, you don't have to do that. Well, it turned out that since he wasn't really on my side, he gotten himself a little army himself mm. and he's going to sit down in service and hold down the fort right. but don't wow. nobody move until I say move mm. <coughs> well the Lord had given me what to do he gave me a little box and he brought the box, I set the box on the piano and uh, I was letting folks know that the Lord's going to bless it it's all about this box right here everybody was like the box the box mm -hmm. Okay, well, nothing really particular about that box. <laughs> but what I was letting them know that they found out later, you're putting God in a box. Mm -hmm. And when you put him in that box, this brother had talked to folks and had folks, they didn't know which way to go. Mm -hmm. but, and when the Lord moved in that service, matter of fact, I explained to people now, even when... I, playing under the anointing, and then I saw, I was hearing all these bad sounds, and there was three <coughs> brothers right on the front row, right, right by me singing this. Oh, Lord, you know, I, I, I <laughs> say Bishop Osborne wrote something to me. <laughs> you know, Dad, you know what that is? <laughs> And I looked at those brothers, they had tears coming down their eyes. And the Lord knows that I realized that he is God. Yeah. Because I couldn't take it. He could. You know, but then I learned right there in that instant, that was the joyful noise. That was the joyful noise. And when you sing in the choir or the groups, that is elect. That means you're polished. What they say, suited and booted. And so the difference in that is 
those that are called are the ones who's going to be here. Do you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. All right. All if you're a singer and you're a call, mm -hmm. where are you going to be? <laughs> So, as Elder Perkins said, if uh, they don't show, well, we pray for them. <laughs> because uh, I can't make nobody do nothing. <laughs> and we pray. We pray our way through. And that is my vision. And I thank the Lord for giving me that patience. But I'm learning more with that patience. Because a lot of times you feel your hands are tied, but then I know why they're tied. <laughs> I know why they're tied. Because you want to take matters into your own hands. <laughs> anyway, that box, that uh, silver box was telling folks, I was telling folks about that box. Anyway, I didn't know how the Lord was going to do that. But I began to minister to each of those young men in all those rooms. Mm -hmm. And all those fellows sang in the choir. And he had worked him and talked him and mm -hmm. got him over there to where. Mm -hmm. When the Lord got finished, everybody knew the Lord was not in that little box. Mm -hmm. And you could just see a ball start coming up. Mm -hmm. When coming up. Coming up, coming up to sing. And then they begin to tell me their story of why I said, you don't have to tell me, I already know. And what some of us don't know, the Lord has gifts in this body. And those gifts work. Amen. Those gifts work. I don't tell you my gift works, but it does. <laughs> and you don't have to tell me I know. And that's the reason why the Lord gave me the gift to be able to look at the audience and know what bread or what song or how to feed the people. Yeah, that's good. And it didn't just, it just didn't work here at church. It works wherever I go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when the, the main thing that we should know as a group of people is don't buck up against leadership. Amen. Don't buck up against leadership. I talk to my mom all the time. You know, I feel like, you know, I got a lot of dad in me. <laughs> I have a lot of my father in me, you know. And uh, I, I do have a lot of my mother in me also. But the difference in between that was I had most of my father in me when I'm working. <laughs> when I'm working, you know, when I'm polishing a group and getting the group ready, I had my father in me at that time. I wasn't used to, okay, you all want to be, you know, I, I, I wasn't used to that, you know, like the way we saw, the way mother would do things, you know. <laughs> so I've been learning that since I've been here, okay? And uh, it's been working. And I see how the Lord works through that patience. Mm -hmm. And because uh, he says, vengeance is mine and I shall repay, says the Lord. Wait a minute. Yes, and I didn't think I would, my voice would even last this long to uh, say as much as I said. But my, my vision fits right in with the vision. And my vision goes even further than the vision, but right with the vision. So we have to look at where our youth is and where we are of how we're going to grow. And the, the youth that we have, that's a church of tomorrow, and we have to make preparations for that. Amen. And we have to sing to the power of the Lord come down. Amen. And I yield the floor. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Father, I give you praise for this opportunity to speak to your people.
Please the Lord and lead and guide me the way. Uh, Pastor asked the subject, my vision for the church as a leader and how it is possible. Everything has been said has been very, very good. Would you lower it? Okay. Everything that's said has been very good. Uh, if I can just give a brief testimony is that all of you know, most of you know that I pastored the church for 11 years before coming here. And then it was a few years before we uh, we came to this church. And uh, there's a testimony about that, but I'm, I don't want to use up my 10 minutes telling that. But uh, uh, basically the church that I passed before was very, very organized. I mean, they told you what to pray. They told you when you did this. They, they told you how to pray. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, there was a difference when I moved out. Yes, you only prayed one prayer, okay, when you were in public in the church. I know some of you look at me, what? No, it's true. Pastor Grace knows. Uh, but anyway, so we were, uh, it was a very organized church, and I would say that there are some good things about the way that we were trained as a pastor because we went through a training. There are some good things, but there were also some things that I praise God that I don't have to adhere to. And uh, it's a wonderful thing to be governed by love. It's a wonderful thing to be governed by love. So as my vision for the church as a leader is the same as the vision of my leader. Because I know what it is to be a leader and people not want to follow. Mm -hmm. That you have a group of folks that have their own way of how the church should go. And you know, Danny kind of touched on that a few minutes ago. It, it, it's difficult. So uh, the thing that I learned out of that experience is, is that, uh, and I was taught as a young child, is that you follow your leader, and the leader's vision should always be your vision. So number one, my vision for the women's group is uh, to teach the women how to be good women and a good wife, a good mother. Yeah. And I I take that from Ruth, the third chapter, where when uh, we know this, many of you, all of you, I hope, know the story of Ruth because I don't have the time to go into it. But when you look at the third chapter in the third verse, where she had finally met, kind of met Boaz in the, in the field, and then her mother-in-law, Naomi, tells her, say, now I'll tell you what, you, you met him now, so you go wash yourself. In other words, she's telling him how to meet a man the right way. She said, go wash yourself, put you some perfume on, girl. And then, you know, I can listen, fix your hair up. But I don't want you getting in bed with him now. No, she said, now you just... Just let him see how you, you know, how you are. And just, and so that's my goal in the women's group is to teach the women how to be a godly woman. Huh? And so I've, I've said to some women, they said, well, it's too late and I already made this. I said, no, it's never too late. You just, just tell the brother, say, look, I'm here to change direction. <laughs> I know that. You know, we're in change direction. Yeah. We're going to do something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Um, and, and because we have all ages, and most of you that come, you know, I try to keep it real. I'm trying Amen. to keep it real. Amen. So we talk about everything, but I still, my whole point is, isn't that right, Sister Patricia? All right. I tell them, look, we want to be a godly woman. Amen. Because if you stay a godly woman, you have no regrets Amen. in the end. Amen. You say, oh, I wish I had a, a, a hand or whatever. No, I, if you teach her the right thing and if you do the right thing, you Amen. have no regrets. Amen. So that's how I propose to accomplish uh, the goal of uh, for the women 
to teach godly women. And that's right in line with uh, uh, Bishop Gray. Uh, we have fun in the women's meeting, we really do. <laughs> and especially when we go on our retreats, and we, we really touch on some sensitive subjects. That's why I try to encourage all the women to come even to our meetings and to the retreats because you may think, oh, we're just, uh, they're probably doing the Bible study. Yeah, we're doing Bible study, but we talk about things that relate to women. All right, okay. So the <laughs> second, so um, the other area that uh, I'm responsible for is the ministry house. And the ministry house, right now, is, the ministry house is pretty stable. But in the past, we've had uh, ladies come in and out and from various backgrounds uh, and all different walks of life. And some were, um, uh, had been incarcerated, and some were on drugs. And so it took a kind of a, um, at times, a kind of an iron fist, sort of, because that there were times that I had, because we want to keep it a safe place. Amen. That's the point. It needs to be a safe place and let them know that God is at the center of this house. And the way I've accomplished it, the way we've accomplished that is I continually ask the Lord to lead me because I had never done anything like that before. So I said, Lord, you have to show me. And so through prayer, through prayer, the Lord directed me on how to accomplish those things. And like I said, in prior years, there were uh, people that came in that may have still been using. So the Lord said, okay, then you need to drug test them first, okay? And then, so my husband's in that line of work, so I said, okay, where can we send them to have this? And so that's how that was accomplished, to make sure that there was no one in there that was using drugs. If I found out they were on, on drugs, then I would say, okay, I'm gonna write a contract with you, and you got so many days to get it cleaned up. And then if they violated, uh, if they uh, used, uh, um, if their behavior was not conducive to the, uh, our environment of you know, keeping the place safe, uh, then I have to, as Elder Danny said, uh, his dad would rise up, my mom would rise up, get out. <laughs> You're going to have to go because you violated too many times. You're drinking, you got something going on here. I'm sorry, you got so many days you got to move because. Bishop Grace has already said to you, are you drinking any smoking? And it just doesn't go with what we're trying to accomplish in that house. So we want the women that are there to be safe. We want them to feel comfortable. And so uh, you don't know what that, uh, when they're not adhering to the rules of the house and the rules from the word of God being a godly woman, you don't Amen. know what that brings into the house. Amen. It puts poison in the tree. Amen. Amen. In the it puts Amen. poison in the tree. Is that right? Amen. 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 We had a, uh, just a little side note, we had a tree and, okay, we had a tree in our backyard and my husband kept saying, he looked at the tree and it was a, it was a huge tree and, and the part of the tree looked like it was damp all the time. But this had a really big trunk. And my husband said, something's wrong with that tree. And I looked at the tree and I'm like, this tree looks fine to me. <laughs> you know? And but he kept saying, something's wrong with that tree. He couldn't figure it out, but he knew it was somehow. I could not figure out what he was talking about. But one day when I had gone to work and he was at home in the bed, he heard this big boom and half the tree split off. And he said, okay, then we found out that part of the tree was diseased. And so then we had to take the whole tree down. But he recognized initially just from, it looked like moisture, that's what it looked like to me, uh, that there was poison in the tree. Uh -huh. And so if you don't watch for and look 
for poison, it will contaminate the whole area and you got to deal with it. You have to deal with it. You have to cut it out. The last area that I am responsible for is the area of finance in the church. And uh, I praise God that he has given me a spirit of Joseph. How to store up and how to uh, how to um, allow uh, just God to work rather than to try and fix everything in one spot. Just Amen. let God say, this is how we're going to do it. Amen. Amen. And so whatever pastor wants, I'm always like, we can do this. <laughs> we can do it. We can do it. Even if it's not there. I, I never even tell her it's not there. I said, we can do it. Because I remember, and, and I'm going to close with this, Sister Carolyn Parks. We, and we would have a, a drive for uh, when we did the roof and when we did the carpet. Uh -huh. We say, we want to do this. And she sat up here and she would tap and she said, this church is something else. <laughs> Those were her words. Said, this church is something else. Because we got behind the leader and we decided that whatever she wanted to do, we were going to do. Amen. And we never sent back a bad report. <laughs> we just kept saying, we're on track. Amen. And even if we weren't on track, we know that God was going to get us on track. <laughs> if we weren't, we knew we were going to, we were going to make it Amen. where she was trying, where she was trying to take uh -huh. it. And so we never brought back a bad report Thank because you. we knew that God was going to fix it. Hallelujah. And so that's how I want to, uh, will accomplish what God has given me as a leader. But my last thing is, is that uh, I've always said this, even when I was pastoring, is to seek ye first Amen. the kingdom of God Amen. and his righteousness and all these things. We'll be adding Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Can we say amen again? Amen. 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 This has been a different New Year's Eve service. Amen. <laughs> Very different. Awesome. And we said we were going to leave some time for testimonies at the end of the, the year. And so our musician is back, so we'll have him to come and give us a number or two and uh, uh, he would uh, leave the testimony for Do I have a... She raised her. All right. She, come on. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, I hope everybody has a praise at least. Amen. Maybe our best one was praise. Amen. And uh, just know before 12, we will be praying and thank you, God, for the Hallelujah. of our year.
shot about six years ago in the paraplegic. And I've been good, I'm just been praying to the Lord to give him some kind of movement. You know, but his spirit is, is well. He knows God. He trusts in God. And I just thank God for that. And I thank God for being here in this church. This church is a home to me. And everybody here is my brothers, my sisters, my uncles, my just my family in general. I consider you guys my family because, yeah, it's because um, even your family can make you feel alone sometimes. But I'd rather be here with you where any day of the year. And um, I thank the Lord for allowing me to be able to sing with Danny. Amen. He's taught me a lot. You know, I like that. And um, I just want to open the floor for anybody who wants to testify. I mean, no, 
I had to do all the phone calls, talking to the insurance underwriters, and talking to the claims adjusters, and talking to the demolition people, and talking with the municipal people. Stuff she doesn't know about. And I, she would come home, and the best I could do was not be stressed out. But the Lord is able, and the Lord brought us through that. And this is the best year I've ever had. I love her house. I didn't want to come here tonight. I want to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> but the Chinese side of me told me to show up. You <laughs> 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 oh, I'm here. 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 I'm here.